going to turn to Acts chapter 27 and we're going to read from verse 21 to 26, although we may talk about the whole passage. This is what the Word of God says. After the men had gone a long time without food, Paul stood up before them and said, Men, you should have taken my advice not to sail from Crete. Then you would have been spared yourself this damage and loss. But now I urge you to keep your courage, because not one of you will be lost, only the ship will be destroyed. Last night an angel of God, whom I am and whom I serve, stood beside me and said, Do not be afraid, Paul, you must stand trial before Caesar, and God has graciously given you the lives of all who sail with you. So keep up your courage, men, for I have faith in God that it will happen just as he told me. Nevertheless, we must run aground on some island. And God will bless his word to us this evening. You know, when you, you look at the life and the ministry of the Apostle Paul, not only do we see a man that had a tremendous passion and a desire to make Jesus Christ known, he wanted Christ to be known. He wanted every person he encountered, every group of people he encountered to come into a knowledge of Jesus Christ. But he was always, as well, someone who moved in the supernatural power of God. The Bible tells us that signs and wonders, amazing miracles, were done through the hands of the Apostle Paul. Miracles were commonplace where his ministry was concerned. He even had the ability and the gifting in the Lord Jesus Christ to plant and establish church fellowships in the most hostile environments, in the most unlikely places. He was so anointed of the living God because of his walk with God, his relationship with God. His encounter with Jesus totally changed his world. The majority of books that we have in the New Testament are largely due to the amazing revelations that Paul received again from the Lord Jesus Christ. So I wouldn't be wrong in saying that he was a man that was right at the centre of God's will for his life. He was walking in the place where God would want him to walk and yet we would also see that he was somebody who experienced extreme difficulties, extreme hardships. He had problems, he had difficulties, he had hardships that came his way on a regular basis. Just because someone's anointed by God does not mean they won't have problems. In fact, the anointing will attract problems and difficulties to your life because the enemy wants to throw you off course, he wants to slow you down, he wants to shipwreck literally your life. But the truth is that none of these hardships ever caused the Apostle Paul to waver in his love for the Lord Jesus Christ. You never see one account of him actually questioning the love of Jesus Christ for him. He had someone who was completely committed to the Lord. He never had any doubt in the Lord's ability to keep him. How many believers today, when they go through a difficulty, go through a trial, are doubting God's ability to see them through? The Apostle Paul never had any doubt in this particular area. And the Apostle Paul was accused of perhaps many false things, accusations that came against him, that forced him in a way to appeal to Caesar's court. But he never complained as to why these troubles or to why these hardships kept coming his way. He was different than many believers today, but I believe that just as Paul said, imitate me, we should be like him in nature, because if Jesus Christ truly is ruling and reigning in our life, we should all be the same in one way. So he simply was someone who sought out the living God for God's purpose for his life, regardless of what he was going through. He wasn't a fair weather Christian, when things are difficult, he abandoned his faith in God. He kept serving God through thick or thin. He served God no matter what circumstances was around him. This is why he could talk about that he's known hunger as well as being well fed. He know what it was to be naked as well as being cold. He know what it was like to be cold as well as to be warm. He experienced different elements from the spiritual realm different things coming against him, but yet he maintained his walk with the living God. So Paul never questioned 
the difficulties that came his way. He totally believed that God had a plan, God had a purpose for his life. God always has a plan, the enemy always has a plot. So God has a plan for your life, just like he had for the Apostle Paul. And it may include some difficulties, some troubles, that God really wants to refine the gold from your life in those situations. Now, prior to the Apostle Paul reaching the island of Malta, the scripture tells us that Paul and the ship that he was sailing on experienced a tremendous storm. This wasn't just a normal storm. The Bible tells it was of hurricane proportion. Today, people experience a little bit of wind and they think it's a storm. No, it's just a little bit of wind, a little bit of rumbling that the enemy brings against you. But this was a hurricane proportion that came against them. And the storm that could have been avoided, it was a storm that could have been avoided if the people had taken the Apostle Paul's advice. This storm could have been avoided. The results of failing to take godly advice actually resulted in a shipwreck. How many of God's plans and purposes, his hopes, his dreams, have sunk simply because people have made wrong choices, that we don't listen to godly advice? And you don't have to have a person to counsel you today, because the Bible tells us that Jesus was sending another counsellor. Jesus is the wonderful counsellor, but the Holy Spirit is another counsellor, one exactly like him, that will give you the same advice as the Lord Jesus Christ would give you. And so we can come before the Lord and ask for his advice so that we don't have to make wrong choices. And it's not just your wrong choices that can shipwreck your life, your destiny, your purpose, but it can be the choices that other people make that affect you. Sometimes other people make a choice that has an impact on your life. Have you ever met someone like that? Maybe you've got family members, the choices they make, the lifestyle choices impact your life and not always for the good, often for the detriment of your walk. It's impacting you, it's disturbing you. And so other people's choices affect other people. Choices are never, you know, isolated or the result of the choice. It can have an impact upon other people's life. So Paul experienced a shipwreck because of somebody else's choice. Think of someone in the Bible like Joshua and Caleb. They experienced walking in the desert or wandering in the desert for 40 years because of other people's choices. Mm. It had an effect upon them. Mm. But even in the midst of that, you've got to keep a right attitude before God. Joshua and Caleb kept a clear attitude that at the end of the period of wandering, they would receive the promise. The Apostle Paul knew at the end of this voyage, he would come in to what God had called him into. The amazing thing is, even though there was repercussions from somebody else's choice, Paul had given them advice, and it wasn't to save his skin. It wasn't, don't sail today, because I don't really want to go to Rome. He was happy to even die in Rome. He was happy to lay down his life for the Lord Jesus Christ. It was simply the fact that at that time of year, he refers to the feast. And he's really referring to the date of the feast. At that time of year, the weather systems were bad in that area. So it was unwise to be sailing in those conditions. And the Apostle Paul was simply pointing that out that if you sail in these conditions, it's very likely that disaster is going to come. And they ignored the advice of Paul because they spoke to the owners of the ship, business, money. Rather than listen to the advice of God, business transaction and money seem to be speaking louder. I wonder how many people today miss out on godly advice because they see the pounds, shillings and pence or the dollar sign before them. We need to be people that are obedient to the living God. The amazing thing, even though Paul is in this situation, is that he had a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. 
And because of that relationship, God would come to his aid at any time. In fact, the word of God says, all who call upon the name of the Lord shall be delivered. Yeah. So every person has the ability to call upon the name of the Lord. In your most difficult time, in times of tremendous temptation, you still have within you the ability to call out to the Lord, the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, and to ask him for help. When everything's going pear-shaped around your life, you can still call out to him. So Paul was someone that had a prayer life. Just because it was a storm raging does not mean that Paul never prayed. Paul would have been continuous prayer before the living God. A continuous relationship that was not broken by a storm. How many times has the enemy used a storm to break your relationship or cut you off? You see, when a storm comes, you don't see the light of the sun. And the enemy brings a storm at times so that you don't see the light of the true sun. Mm -hmm. So all you're looking at is the storm and how dark things are getting and how the wind is getting up. The Apostle Paul never allowed his circumstances to break, to cut off, to have a momentary lapse in his relationship with the living God. His relationship was maintained through the storms of life. Is that you tonight? Do you realise that in the storm, that storm should drive you to the living God? Not drive you to disaster, but drive you into the presence of God. In my own life, when there's trouble, I tend to pray more. And I often say to the Lord, really Lord, I should be praying as fervent when there's no trouble. And that's truth. But in the times of the storm, we need to seek refuge in the living God. And Paul had a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. So he wasn't going to abandon him to the schemes of the enemy or the schemes of man. He was with him. And we've got to understand no matter where we're journeying, where we're going, the Lord is with you. He never leaves you, he never forsakes you, he doesn't abandon you, he doesn't walk out or desert you when the going gets tough. He supports you during those times, he upholds you in his righteous right hand and no one can snatch you from his hand. This is the confidence that we have even through storms. So storms can be expected in our life if we truly follow in the Lord Jesus Christ. So I'm saying Paul experienced this storm that was life-threatening. It really was life-threatening. But he had a relationship with the living God and that can turn over situations around. And the Lord himself sent an angelic being. You see, angels are the mighty ones who do his bidding. They do the Lord's bidding. They serve the living God. God uses the angelic beings to carry out his purpose, whatever that purpose may be. So angels don't just deliver messages. They'll watch over you, they'll protect you. They will minister the health of Christ into your life. Amen. The pool of Bethesda, an angelic being used to come down and stir the waters. And the first person they received healing, the angel never healed them. The Lord healed them. He just used the angel to carry forth what he wanted to do. And God will use you in the same way to carry forth his plan, his purpose, his words, his endeavours, if you will trust him. The Apostle Paul a relationship with God and he encountered an angelic being that the Lord had sent and this angelic being came in the midst of a storm you see if his attitude wasn't right in the storm he would not have experienced an angelic encounter if his attitude was not right he would not have heard from heaven and I'm saying in the storm adjust your attitude so that your attitude is right before the living God. Don't let the storms, the thunder clouds, the lightning of the enemy disturb you so much that you don't encounter the living God. So in the midst of the storm, an angelic being came. God does not abandon you in the storm. He will often speak to you in the midst of the storm. Amen. Paul 
all needed the Lord. And the angel came in the midst of the storm to deliver a word to Paul. A tremendous word. A word of amazing assurance and guidance to Paul that dispelled any fear for his future or the outcome of the storm. The angel brought a word that so encouraged the Apostle Paul, that lifted him up. So the enemy may be saying, this is the end of your ministry, Paul, it's the end of your life, but the angel's assuring him that he's going to testify about the Lord Jesus Christ before Caesar. So that storm was not going to take his life. In fact, God granted him the lives of those that were journeying with him. And that's amazing because that's from the prayer life of one man. And I'm saying that your prayer life can impact others, that it can save those that are journeying through life with you. There are many in the church that are journeying with you, and they're already saved. But there's other people that are journeying life with you, your family, your friends, who need to know the Lord Jesus Christ. And the angels reassuring Paul that God's grace towards him has given him the lives of all that sail with him. That's the grace of God and granting your request. 276 of them, not one hair on their head would be lost. Amen. That's an amazing truth. If God says that, God can do that. Only God could do that. So Paul was basically told that he was getting this guidance, getting this message of assurance. No one was going to lose their life and you're going to testify in Rome. So all fear in respect to his future was dispelled. The storm itself may have been designed by the enemy to take lives. But it was the storm that was used of God to save lives. To save lives. They would have seen the miraculous working in Paul. They would have seen a calmness in a situation where everyone else is panicking. What are the world seeing in your life? What are they seeing when you go through the same sort of trial as they do? Are they seeing somebody who seems to be calm and at peace? Or they seen somebody, it just reflects the same fear and panic they do. They would have saw a calm and assurance in Paul's life that he had never seen before. So the storm was used of God to save lives. There's always a purpose. We always quote, the enemy intends it for harm, but God uses it for God. And we're very good at quoting it, but we're not very good at living it. When we're in the storm, we forget that. So this storm actually positioned Paul in the place where God desired him to be. God wanted him to encounter the people on the Isle of Malta. He wanted him to encounter those people so that the miraculous of God could be seen and that people would put their faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. He was making Jesus Christ known. He was journeying to Rome, that was his final destination. But this was the destination where God was bringing him. And there may be times in your life where you're like the sailors that were on the ship with Paul, where you were drifting and not sure where you were going. You're like you're drifting to an unknown shore. But the truth is that Jesus knows exactly where he is taking you and Jesus knew exactly where he was taking Paul you could say the wind was driving him but I'm saying as well the wind of the spirit was moving his life to the place where he would encounter people and the whole group of islanders would surrender their life to the Lord Jesus Christ is it worth going through a storm for those sort of things absolutely it really is. So the Lord knows exactly where he's taking you. 
and he knows how you're going to get there. Not everyone is going to arrive at God-given destinations by plain sailing on a luxury liner. It's not like that. Some of you will arrive after going through life's storms, life-threatening storms, and you'll arrive floating on a plank of wood, just like the Apostle Paul. In other words, with all that you have left from what you've been through, pieces of what you formerly had, mm. he arrived in that place, and that's how Jesus takes you, and that's how Jesus is mm. used you. No baggage with them, no worldly goods, just holding on to the only thing they could hold on to. And I'm saying to you tonight, hold on to Jesus. Amen. Through any storm that he takes you through. Acts 27 and verse 44 says, And in this way, everyone reached land in safety. Everyone. Some people had to swim to the shore. It was either sink mm. or swim for them. But all of them, 276, with no one left, arrived at, on shore safe, just as the Apostle Paul said. Then you'll notice when you read through the passage of Scripture that the centurion on board when the ship was wrecked, wanted to kill the soldiers. Not the soldiers, the sailors. But the Bible tells us that because of his favour towards Paul, because he saw something of the Lord within him, he spared their lives. Mm -hmm. The enemy would want to kill them, them men and sailors, so that the word of God was not fulfilled. Mm -hmm. But the Apostle Paul had said that you're not going to lose any of your lives. You're all going to be safe. But you must stay with the boat. You don't go abandoning the boat for something else that you think is safety. Some of them had that in mind, but the Bible says they cut and let loose the lifeboat. And some people are looking for a lifeboat in other things today. You've got to look in the Lord Jesus Christ and Him alone. The centurion had it in mind to kill those on that ship that were now in the water. But God preserved their lives so that the words that the Apostle Paul said would come about. The Apostle Paul had an amazing confidence in the Lord. He says, for a higher faith in God, that will happen just as he told me. And you need to have faith in God that it will happen just as he had told you. You may be here tonight and saying to yourself, but I've not heard from God lately. If you never heard from God speaking to you in a supernatural way again, you could hear from him every day by simply yeah. reading his word. Amen. He doesn't let one stroke of the pen, one word that he has written to you fall to the ground. Mm -hmm. Is able to uphold his word completely. Our God is faithful. I've had people come to me for ministry, people that are in ministry themselves, and they say, I'm not hearing from the Lord. I don't feel the same way that I used to feel. And they say, Well, when you don't feel that way, just simply trust in the integrity of God's word. Amen. If you have nothing else, it's God's word. You've got to trust in his integrity. Like God said that to me at times. The Lord, you're not speaking quite as you normally do. And God says, what do you say to other people? Trust in the integrity mm. of my word. He's basically telling me to eat what I'm giving out. Mm. Take some of your own medicine. We've got to be people that do that. Paul had a complete trust in the living God. And every life was preserved. The amazing thing is that when Paul was shipwrecked up on that island of Malta, that the Bible tells us on that island that the people there showed them unusual kindness. That's because of the favour of God 
upon his life. He was brought into a place where because of that kindness and because of the weather conditions, the people are welcoming them, providing for them. And Paul just tries to take some wood to the fire and a viper fastened to him. Now the Jews themselves as well as the Maltese people, because they believed the Maltese had pagan gods, they believed in. In fact, many of them believed in Greek gods. But because a viper fastened to him in Jewish culture and in Maltese culture, they thought that if someone was a criminal, a snake would strike them and he would die. And so when the snake fastened to Paul's hand, he simply shook it off into the fire, into the anointing of God. He's shown us how to handle the serpents, introduced them to the fire of God. And what happened, people watched him and observed him, expecting him to swallow up and die. If you were bitten by a poisonous viper, you've literally got minutes. They watched him, they observed him, and after a long time, they decided that he was a god. <laughs> he was not a god. He was sent to the island of Malta. How we got there may not have been the ideal conditions that we would pick. But he got to that place. And because of the supernatural in saving all those people from the sea, the supernatural in saving him from the viper's bites, the people started to believe in the living God. He ministered healing to those that was there. And everybody who came received their healing. The whole group of people received from the Lord. The Bible tells us, really, a storm came into his life. But when you go through a storm, and you come out safe, knowing that the Lord is with you, doesn't it create within you such a heart of thanksgiving mm. and of gratitude because you truly know that the Lord has been with you through the storm, otherwise you'd have gone under. Sometimes even when we don't realise it, um, there are certain storms that we go through and we'd be much better and much richer going through the storm than without because I'm telling you the storm gives you a testimony that you can say to a person yes I had this dark period of my life where every cloud was dark around me when things were life-threatening for me when my life was seen to be shipwrecked the world today wouldn't use the word shipwrecked we, even though scripture uses that to talk about a person's life or abandoning the faith, shipwrecking the faith. They probably use it and say your life is a car crash. But it's the same thing. You're able to tell them that you've been through that and on top of that experience, deadly poison was introduced into your system. But you shook it off in the name of Jesus. Amen. And you witness to people and you minister to healing. The enemy intended to kill Paul, the Lord Jesus Christ intended to use Paul to minister healing. He turns things around so that all those people on the island who were sick were brought to Paul and he healed them all. You know what the outcome was? Not only did they know Jesus Christ, but when they left, he said they furnished him with everything he needed for his journey. You may go through a storm, but if God is taking you somewhere, you will get there. And even if the storm causes you to lose everything that you value, everything that you've got, God will furnish you with everything you need for the journey to achieve your purposes. Amen. I just simply reckon that the Apostle Paul knew that he couldn't die in the island of Malta. Because the word of God that came from the angelic being says you will testify in Rome. So how could he die there? If he died there, he would have been testifying in Rome. Mm. 
So he had an absolute confidence in God. When God releases a word to you, you will often find that the enemy will cause a situation to arise to try to take that word of God out of you mm. or oppose it. Well, you've got to shake the enemy off. A viper to me, a snake represents Satan. Mm. You've got to shake every attack off into the anointing of God. Amen. Paul never allowed anything that the enemy was trying to introduce into his life to affect him. He shook it off. Total and new in the presence of God. This is a man that's anointed with the same Holy Spirit that dwells within you. So the Holy Spirit can do exactly the same. These things are recorded for yours and my benefit. Mm -hmm. So that we can learn from someone else's experience and know that God is able to get you to the place he wants you to be regardless of what you would encounter on the journey. And I want you to be encouraged tonight that when storms come your way, and Jesus said in this world you'll have trouble, when storms come your way, that you can find a refuge in the Lord Jesus Christ. He will give you words of encouragement. There'll be supernatural encounters. He will keep you and he'll enable you to get through everything that's thrown against you. Amen. That's how God wants you to be, to have an assurance in him. There are a lot of the storms that the enemy designs, God will use to bring about his purpose and his glory. There's always a purpose within a storm. How many times have you experienced a storm, a literal storm, and you said, well, it will clear the air. It clears away. And after the storm, there's always a clearing. Mm. There's always a way forward. Mm. And God has a destiny, his place within your heart. He's a purpose for you, each of you here today. And he is able to complete that journey with you. So be encouraged with that tonight. We're going to pray right now. If anyone does need prayer tonight, maybe you're going through a storm. We'll pray for you. And we'll trust God to move in power. We're not going to pray that you won't go through the storm. We're just going to simply pray that Jesus Christ will be with you through that storm and bring you through it into your destination so that you can serve the purposes of God in this generation. Amen? Amen. Thank you, Jesus. We give you all the glory. Father, we're not people that oppose the storms of life, but we simply pray that in every storm that we face, in every difficulty that we go through, that, Lord, our eyes will be upon you, that the storm would not take our eyes off the Lord Jesus Christ, but would cause our eyes to be firmly fixed upon him. And we pray that, Father God, that just as that storm was trying to drive that boat, that you would be the one that would drive the boat of our life in the powerful name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We trust in you. We believe in you, Father, that you are able to do just exactly as you said you would. In Jesus' name, our confidence is in you and you alone. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.